and among the end time strategies that God is revealing as a prophetic blueprint to his body please listen there are three areas that I've heard the Lord repeatedly drum in my spirit that the saints need to rise to a higher level of understanding of number one is dominion over unclean spirits this is an aspect of the faith life that in truth believers have not yet had a thorough understanding as to the spiritual dynamics that control dominion over unclean spirits oh please let your spirit be open tonight in the name of Jesus Christ dominion over unclean spirits in as much as we confess that this is a fact in Christ and I'm coming there shortly most believers experientially are yet to walk in that reality dominion over unclean spirits number two dominion over sickness and disease this is the second area the Spirit of God has been drumming into my spirit it's like there is a unique grace that is being released over the body of Christ to bring men and women into a higher understanding empowerment to manifest dominion in this area dominion over sickness and disease hallelujah the rate of people who get healed whether medically or supernaturally with respect to those who have been or relative to those who have been oppressed by satan is very small the spirit of god wants to to close that margin are we together now there should not be 100 people suffering from sicknesses cancer like we prayed over or some demonic thing and then you have just one testimony whereas the remaining people it does not look like victory the character of victory is that it always dominates are we together now yeah dominion over sickness and disease number three the third area that the Spirit of God has been putting a strong emphasis and this is for the body of Christ is dominion over resources these three areas dominion over resources that if you must survive the end times with all the onslaughts that the devil is bringing upon the nations, it is important for us to be reoriented, re-educated, to understand in truth from scripture and completely so the dynamics that govern dominion over unclean spirits, dominion over sicknesses and diseases, dominion over resources because these three god revealed to me will be satan's greatest tool before jesus returns the attack that is coming on the body of christ will be along these three areas our inability to understand how to establish victory over spirits all kinds of satanic spirits and you'll be learning something powerful shortly will keep many families and many people bound in spite of prophetic words prophetic confessions fastings and prayer and you'll find out that satan seeks or seems to be gaining dominance even over the lives of believers and then number two is the body of believers the greatest way that god is mocked in the life of the believer is when he is alive and begins to deteriorate in the presence of everybody it is an indictment on the love of God the character of God and the power of God that Satan brings an individual and makes a caricature out of that person and a mysterious sickness is eating your body and has no medical explanation and it even becomes more indicting if that believer loves Jesus because you will search for the explanation as to why that person should be in that condition everything the person should do to avoid that condition usually he or she will tell you i have done it i've loved the lord i've given seeds and many times when these things happen as men of god sometimes we feel embarrassed to admit that we are limited ourselves so we create all kinds of theological explanations like i'm sure you don't have faith i do not agree 
I do not agree. It is not always a faith problem. Believe me. There is something we do not know that has not brought us into higher levels of power. And you will be learning something really powerful this night. I'm praying for you that what you will learn tonight will help you to put every demonic spirit, every manifestation of darkness that has plagued you hitherto, that you will not only do it for your sake, but you will do it for the sake of everyone around you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. If you were to do a TV interview for me and you ask me, Joshua Selman, what do you think is the major problem of the average believer today? My response to that question will be number one. I think, and I wrote it here, that the believer does not have a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption holistically presented the first problem of the average believer is not zeal it's not passion there is a very severe bankruptcy of a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption hallelujah there is not just there is a way god should be known but there is also a way a believer should grow and look at me please it is a dangerous thing to start helping a believer in his faith journey and then all you introduce him to is responsibility it is dangerous the foundation of the believers work is not an awareness of his responsibility the foundation of the believers work is what Christ has done and until the believer understands Christ that way he will keep seeing God as a selfish self-centered God who is only out to save so he can use and that narrative about God is not proper. And from that narrative will come all kinds of weaknesses. People who have exerted power and dominion in the body of Christ, past and present, are people whose foundation was properly laid. Are we together now? And the foundation was having a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption. Everything that captures Jesus, his coming, his earth walk, the significance of his death, the significance of his burial, his resurrection, his ascension and enthronement, and what that means to the believer today, what the believer has now become in light of that reality. You will never be able to rise to become a champion in the kingdom if that is not the foundation of your understanding. It matters at what point in your life you learn that truth. So there are many people who their first approach to the knowledge of the things of the spirit is warfare. So their concept of warfare with all due respect is already a journey that will end up in repeatable, recyclable defeats. Because the basis upon which that warfare should be administered was not even known in the first place. So it becomes an endless journey of boxing Satan and watch if he will reply. And then I box him again. How many did you give him? Two. How many did he reply? Five. Oh, you need to step up. So that narrative produces weak believers. Praying from the lens of weakness. Fasting from the lens of weakness. Confessing the word from the lens of weakness. Is someone learning already? Then on the other hand, you have people who have these fundamentals but then in addition to these fundamentals unfortunately they remain at that level and so they keep seeing all the things that the word of god says are finished and have been credited to the believers account but never walk in the reality of any of them it is more frustrating to know what should be and not have the power to make it manifest so you hear a lot of confession in church in jesus name i can't be sick in jesus name i can't be poor but then you are seeing the life of that person confessing daily and progressively tending toward what he says he's not and then you know we preachers sometimes say just continue just you keep don't worry about what is happening and the person says are you joking i'm going through pain and you say i should not worry about it one day i have to worry about it and say what is wrong Many people continued like that till they died. Others continued till they failed. 
Others continued till they backslided. Others continued till they insulted God and walked out of the Christian faith. And became advocates through their anger that don't mind this church thing. These guys are just a bunch of, of liars who want to manipulate members to get gain. It matters how your spiritual understanding is constructed. So back to my interview. You ask me the question, what is the challenge with the average believer? My first response is that there is a bankruptcy of a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption. And let me tell you the truth. Um, I think for the average believer in our generation, we had our understanding about what we call redemption realities from largely, and with all due respect, what we call the word of faith movement in partnership with the charismatic movement because of their inclination to the word and the ministry of the holy spirit so the average believer had his understanding about redemption realities from the lens of those who came from this movement and they taught many powerful and wonderful things fathers like kenneth he again tl osborne and these great men they demonstrated that they understood what they knew but let me tell you the truth god remains constant but his system of upgrading men to light is progressive. That means every generation should see clearer and farther than the previous generation. It becomes an embarrassment if the fathers see greater than us. It means we are not growing. Because they have, we have the advantage of their scars and their shoulders to climb upon. Plus the advantage of the Holy Spirit. We should be able to see something they did not see as clear. And one of the major issues with the revelation of redemption realities as we have in the body of Christ is that there is a thorough on the misunderstanding of the believer's authority in Christ. I have studied materials again and again as to the understanding of the believer's authority. Most believers are just blindly mentored that we have authority in Christ and that is true. We are like Christ and that is true. We are gods and that is true. And most believers stop there, but it is a random thought that is just emotionally received. Most people do not even understand what that statement means. What does it mean to have or to be in authority? Question two, what is the jurisdiction of the authority? What is Satan allowed to do and what is he not allowed to do? What can the believer do? And what can the believer not do? For instance, when the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Or number two, the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature. Do you know what that means? I have taught you here, but for the sake of this, this topic we're dealing with now, it is not everything God has and God is that he gave man. Are we together? When the Bible calls us partakers of his divine nature, that is a fact. But it is not every part of God that he gave man. There are certain dimensions of God that he did not share with man. These are the dimensions of God that brands him exclusive to himself. For instance, the quality of omniscience, the ability to know all things, God did not give man. Number two, omnipresence. The ability to be everywhere at the same time. That is a dimension of God he did not give man. Are we together? Number three, omnipotence. Man is not all powerful. Our authority in the kingdom is not absolute. It is derived. It's a product of a relationship and it can be lost. So when a believer exercises authority in the kingdom, it's not something that was invented outside of God's participation. It is a product of your relationship, a flow that comes from him to you. Are we together now? Yes. So you see, when the Bible tells us that we are partakers of his divine nature, if the believer is not educated to understand the full implication, you will start doing a lot of heretic practices that will only leave you confused yourself and then to confuse others. The fact that we are partakers of his divine nature or one with Christ or seated with Christ. The word seated with Christ here is a spiritual reality but is also a, is just a, a way, a graphic representation of how one we have become with him. Are we together now? Yeah. 
So if you ask the average believer, you are seated with Christ, he will say, yes, you have authority, yes, over thrones, dominions, every name that is named, yes. But now to manifest that authority becomes a serious problem. How then do I walk in the reality of that power, that authority and experience? Number two, <laughs> Satan. Let's talk about Satan in one minute. What? No, don't write, just listen. What kind and what level of authority did God give man over Satan? What are you allowed to do to Satan and what are you not allowed to do to Satan? I 